So craftsmanship, I think craftsmanship is is important in in any aspect, in any career, you know, from like said, furniture to, to, to whatever, um, media, you know, anything. I think truly having appreciation and a pride for, for what you're doing is almost essential to make anything quality. Well, and to live like a quality life too, right? If you don't enjoy it, if you're not about it and that's just your grind, then you're never going to be, you know, you're never going to be the best at it and you're never going to be like as fulfilled yeah. as you could be. No, I could see that. I've built some shit, like you said, when doing construction and you're so hard on yourself and you're looking at different shit. And I've built some stuff that I was just like, oh, yeah, back to the scrap pile. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't and, show anybody. Yeah, and if you don't have that inspiration to do that in your life, then maybe you're doing the wrong thing, right? I truly think that I think too many people live a life. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> too many people live a life of just doing shit for the wrong reason usually work yeah a lot know. of them are just stuck into it because it's money and it usually starts with college mm -hmm. like people go to college and they go to college for you know in my opinion the number one wrong reason is for a job that's going to make them good money right. um but it's not something they're passionate in and you know my wife's a nurse <clears throat> and you see this a lot in the medical industry is you have people that should not be nurses that should not be doctors that go into it just for the simple you know i want to make money um, and I think you get, you know, almost a subpar industry by, you know, having people there that don't want to be there. Yeah. I hope that's not the case with like airline pilots. <laughs> <laughs> I think pilots are one of those things where it's like, they you really know, be it. from yeah. a kid, yeah, you know, that's yeah, yeah, a, yeah. that's a, a kid wanted career, sure, but like you, aspirated you, career. You really want your doctor to be that too, but it's you do, not. Yeah, but so. uh, you know, I think there's like, you see these like bedside horrible bedside manners or this horrible malpractice or you know doctors doing just horrible shit it's for fucking money yeah i you know i think a lot of them too get it's like politicians is kind of the same boat where they maybe a lot of them have good intentions going in they did want to but they got in there they realized the system that it is and you can either if you do actually want to make the money you got to play this miserable game yeah and so they're not happy so yeah it's tough sounds and then, like hollywood <laughs> and there's a lot of systems that we got that are like that where people do it for the wrong reasons get there it's something other than then they feel trapped yeah yeah especially if you, you like medical school and you're however much yeah. you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt then yeah you really might be trapped well and i give that to my wife i mean she really like she was really passionate about medicine she really wanted to help people <clears throat> she took it serious she i mean all her classes that she went through to get her to get her degree she would like take every class serious you know research study like a fucking beast um and i could see like okay she she might not be doing this because this is her like super passion but she's making it she's turning it into her passion and she wants to be the best she could possibly be at it so i think there's that level of people too which is you know the world needs yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Hopefully it's, you know, you want it to be more that than, than the other. Yeah. And it's like, how do we get it to that spot? I don't know. It's, <clears throat> it's like, we don't have enough time. It, society tells us that by the time you're 18, you need to have it figured out pretty yeah. much. Um, or you're, you're off to the last couple of years of you better figure it out right yeah. now. And I think that's a problem. I yeah. think that like when I was in school is if you're not going to college right after you graduate high school, you're one of those dumb kids that's going to work at a minimum wage job the rest of your life. Pretty yeah. much. That's what you got. Yeah. They uh, totally rid off, wrote off the mm -hmm. tradesmen and, well, and all the guys that were. And what I realized now is <laughs> doing for, amazing things. So the school it's just because I got, I stayed in the academic school, the kids in like middle school that were, you know, labeled as problematic. They ended up in the high school, the remedial high school, and that's what they did there. They learned trades. Those yeah. kids, some of my friends that got sent to those schools are killing it. They're oh, like yeah. plumbers and, and contractors, and they're making way more money on average than the kids that came from the academic school. Yeah. I realized I just got shafted. I should have fucked around more and ended up in the remedial. <laughs> Dude, all those skills would be much more valuable than anything I learned in the academic school. Well, they're actual life skills. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, academics, I think the main goal is just teach us to be workers. Um, so I think, you know, the main goal of school is just provide good workers. Whereas a lot of these trades and, and those kind of schools, they, they learn valuable trades that are, yeah. you know, worth something even in like a barter situation. Right. Yeah. They, they learned how to be workers as well, but the, th the difference is like they go right into the work and they get this, you know, four or five, six years step up. 
and then it's you know if you're smart with that amount and then you've got a lot of time behind you the rest of your life if you are smart with that money in those early like if you're 20 years old making 150 grand and you've got no responsibilities you're in a very good position to be you know very economically free when you're 30 yeah if you're smart with that money yeah versus the kid that's at i'm 20 and i'm 120 grand in debt and i've got two more years of this before I even consider well, looking at the job. average, you know, with the, the, the fucking good old boys student loan program. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, the whole design is not only are you just designed to be a worker, but then you're fucking designed to be in debt to them a debt slave. for allowing you to be a fucking worker for right. the rest of your life. Right. 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 I, I, we still pay my wife's student loans. Of like, course. I, and yeah. you know what? I took a, a very, most people don't know this about me, but, uh, I was really into architecture. So I started in a drafting program. Um, you know, I dropped out of high school um, and then went to like the community college and just tested out of all my pre-rex or, pre or whatever. Sure. They didn't ask for a GD or no, fucking you diploma out, or anything. Yeah. You know, yeah, I didn't yeah. give a fuck. So you classes. And, yeah, yeah, so I went into the drafting program and uh, I only did like a couple semesters and I racked up like fucking eight or 10 grand in student loans. <laughs> and I'm like, how? Like, what did I, what are, you know, I took that fucking sucker check mm -hmm. that they give you. Cause I was like, oh, you know, I was doing countertops and stuff and the housing industry had crashed. And so I was like, oh, I'm going to go, go to school. I'm going to go get a more stable career, you know, in sure. architecture, drafting. Dude, that was the biggest mistake I ever fucking made. <laughs> you know, I, I think it was two semesters in when they had a career day. And they bring in this old sad fuck that's like 70 fucking five years old and poor bastard been drafting, you know, for fuck had sick old arthritic hands and he'd been drafting, you know, hand drafting for decades. And one of the guys had the balls to ask him how much he made. And, you know, he, he spouted out, you know, some salary, which basically equivalented to like um, fucking 16, 17 bucks an hour. Right. You know what I mean? The amount of work and, and, that he's putting in. Yeah, and and he was basically the drafters were the architects' bitches. Yeah, they did all the work. You know, mm -hmm. they were the fucking the punk, and you know they didn't get any credit for it. And uh, dude, I went out on a smoke break, and I was like looking around, and I was like, fuck, like when I was doing granite and doing construction work, I was making over twenty dollars an hour, and I was like, what am I fucking doing? Right, I'm taking out these student loans, fucking getting myself in mm -hmm. debt. I'm not working, so I'm just a fucking, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's, it to me, it's like, I think academics should be reserved for very specific fields. And and I'm saying like culturally what I think might be a more successful system. I'm not telling anyone what they need to do. But I think like for my own life, I would like to go back in an academic sense when I'm like 60 and learn that's when i would want to go to like get the academic history or you know like various aspects of academics that are interesting to me but oh yeah go take art classes exactly. go fucking take when music older, classes right. yeah but, but what i wanted when i was you know 18 was training on skills like the shop class and you know i wish i was a better welder i wish they had taught me how to weld yeah. when i was 18 that you know how valuable that skill is throughout life like if you're if you're 18 trying to figure out what you take a strong look at welding because man that's an endless career i so wish i was a better welder so i'm the fucked up generation that was there in new mexico where they took shop wood shop metal shop and auto shop out of the high schools yeah so and, and, you know, I didn't have a dad growing up or whatever. Um, not many good male, male influences. And I could have really used those. I did take woodshop. They took it. I, I took it uh, freshman, sophomore year, and then they canceled the program. Right. Um, no, just freshman year. And then they canceled the program my sophomore year. But there was no auto shop. There was no welding shop. And, yeah, those fucking skills are so valuable you know what i mean and i could have used all of those skills in multiple aspects of my life you know now looking yeah, back right um so yeah no that would be some like continued education that i would take not for a career but just for personal life survival skills. right right you like know, yeah, hobby skills exactly right now i've the the local college a little whatever community college has a welding course I've been like, now's the time I can afford to pay cash for it. Yeah. I can go learn to weld. You have the time? Yeah, I have, no, I don't have the time. That's the problem. I want to do when I'm like fucking 60. That's, yeah. but that's too late. So uh, maybe when my kid's old enough to go with me, we'll go do the welding class yeah. together. Or just, I'll just train them to weld. I don't need to do it if he can do it. So I guess we should get started and introduce you. Um, <laughs> welcome to the farm table. Uh, for those of you, those watching that don't know who you are, why don't you uh, let them know who you are? 
Uh, my name's Dustin. I live in the woods. Um, <laughs> uh, I, uh, I also have made a little bit of a name for myself in the cannabis space. Um, I'm known as Future4200 on the internet for the most part. Um, I've got an Instagram. There's a forum. It's named that as well. And then we also run the Good Life Gang oh, membership yeah. discount club for cannabis processors, but really just an excuse to throw cool parties. Yeah. We did that last night here at, at Farmers. Uh, we did that last night and the night before. <laughs> we actually had two nights of parties, yeah. We partied pretty hard here. I think there was a Canacon too. A there, little bit, yeah. <laughs> we were there for a couple hours. Canacon was all right. The party last night was, I had a bunch of people that were like, this was way more valuable than the conference. Well, and you know, I'm one of the original members of the Good Life Gang, and that's one thing that since, you know, my first event, and since my first convention, um, there's only so much networking you can do or even want to do on the like event floor, exhibit floor. But the Good Life Gang puts together all the right people, all the, in my opinion, all the cool, down to earth, intelligent, like minded, culture minded people at these conventions all over the country. And then puts them in a private, more private, more intimate setting um, where they can medicate, where they can party, where they can let loose. But at the same time, I think the most valuable networking happens at those kind of events and not on the exhibit floor. 100%. And I think the Good Life Gang has really captured that ability. You know what I mean? Everybody yeah. at the convention wants to know where's the after party. Right. Um, and, you know, having a private more exclusive especially you know member only or basically you got to know somebody right um i think it's just genius yeah it works and really just being able to consume if you could consume openly at the conferences like these after parties wouldn't really oh, they'd yeah. still be all right but it would be a different game well and you know and they have the official sponsored one every every year of some company suckers in for that and Their all the party. chads yeah. all the chads go to that and all the people that don't consume and they go in there i saw some some pictures from ours that we had here uh and good for them good yeah, for them no doubt. because you know i don't know if i'd want them fucking kicking it over <laughs> here because that would just be yeah. you know the convention mm -hmm. um but being able to get all the hash heads um all the real stoners all the real people that have fought for this culture, this industry, this everything for so many years, being able to get those guys in the, in the same place together. That's, that's powerful Yeah, and fun. For sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's worked out really well following around the trade shows and having parties afterwards. It's uh that's a very successful genius. model. Yeah. Everybody's already here. You got a bunch of fly-ins. It's, it's uh, slick. Well, and one thing that I've always gotten from the good life gang was a ton of value in the actual purpose and that's discounts for the equipment I buy. Right. Um, and that's where, you know, people, couple, and I'm honest, bro. I'm, I'm not fucking trying to get everybody in the good life game, but people have asked me like, oh, you know, what's the value in it? And I said, well, if you're buying fucking equipment, if you're working with, you know, these, these ancillary equipment companies and a big range of different companies, sure. there's a lot now. Yeah. Um, there's a discount involved. So not only do you have the networking, not only do you have the uh, the ability to access the forum and all the great minds and the ability to access the the back end stuff, the SOPs, but I mean, dude, I think Busy B, I mean, I've saved Busy B alone, I've saved fucking 30, 40 grand with already. Yeah. You know, over a couple years of right. purchases just from being a gang member. Yeah, right. Um, C one D one labs. Mm -hmm. God. Alex has treated me, you know, Alex has become a, a friend now because right. of the Good Life King. Right. And I mean, that guy treats me amazing. Right. You know, um, and, you know, just standard Good Life King discounts will save you thousands and thousands of dollars. And and I think that's a lot of things that people don't realize. Um, so, yeah, if you're in that extraction space, if you're in that cannabis space, um, I know you guys have done a lot more with brought on a lot more growers and more yeah, just yeah, dispensary owners and just yep, cannabis yep. people in general right um but yeah if you're in that space you just just the value of the savings is is huge yeah and and we have a tiered down uh membership for people that are kind of in that space if you're in the industry but not a processor you don't need the discounts but you found a lot of value in the That's in smart. the meetups and you don't want to buy a ticket to each one you can buy a you know the lower tiered membership and come to the the meetups and i have guys that do that that just travel around and come to the meetups just to meet yeah. people because of the networking um along the line with 
not only do you get the discounts from these companies, but you get the chance to party with like the CEO. Yeah. And the thing, and and you know, when you get the chance to hang out with someone like this and talk to them after the show and hang out with them, you build these relationships that all all businesses, all the transaction of money is is, is relationships. And yeah. so, if you can build strong relationships with a guy that owns a company, yeah, you can get your gang discount, but you can also leverage you know a better situation yeah. overall. You could get better discounts just because you know you've you've built this relationship with this CEO of this affiliate company. Like the more you hang out with Huber, the better they treat you. <laughs> no, exactly, and and so on, and 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 you know, solvent direct. And, Everyone, it's and just all good these business. Yeah. There's the other thing that the gang does that I think is really important, especially for the new guys coming on to cannabis, is they vet. Yeah, you guys vet, and 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 if you don't know what that means, you guys look into these vendors and make sure they're legit make sure they're not fucking people make sure they don't have a mile long list of bad reviews make right. sure that you know people in the industry haven't been affected negatively sure. by them um that is so important yeah and you can leverage your membership through me to mediate you know third-party customer service uh, issues and we've done it multiple times and i've, I've seen it i've dropped companies because of their inability to treat people properly i've seen it yeah so you know we we hold people accountable for their shit I think it's extremely valuable. I've, like I said, it, it's done nothing but good things for me um, since I've been involved. The people I've met and the relationships I've created from the group I, is is huge. Yeah, and um, I want to really touch on the point that the business model of the gang is incredible, and it's something that I was. It's a funny story. I was riding. I was driving an excavator, digging a pond. I'm super high on mushrooms. I'm listening <laughs> to Tim Ferriss's Four Hour Work Week uh, book <laughs> on uh, like a. Uh, audiobook and he says two things and one of them is make more money and work less which i'm like yeah all right let's do it and then number two is find a successful business model in another industry and bring it into your niche and apply it there so i'm the member i'm, I'm a member of a, another membership support uh company or a group it's the survival podcast he has the same thing if you become a member you save all this money on your prepping stuff your seeds your ammo your like these yeah food, all, everything like everything to be an off-grid homestead kind of person <clears throat> so i took that model and applied it to cannabis i went to mike at lab society and i said hey i got this idea he said you're crazy but sure i'll i'll play along i'll give you a discount to your members yeah. and then I put that out into the space and I used it to leverage a bunch of other companies that said, Hey, lab society is giving me this discount to my, my group. Yeah. And I got a bunch of people to sign up right off the bat and it just exploded from there. But that model is a good one. If you've got a following, use it to leverage some sort of value for those followers and then sell them a, a, an access to it and then throw, throw little social things. And then what I found is that by the gang really became the physical presence of like with the forum uh, the digital forum because yeah. a lot of it inter intertwines as far as like the network yeah. and the people that i've met in person that are on the forum not only do we have a much more positive relationship there but i found that they seem to be all like really good people right yeah i have never met someone why well, that's not true i have met a couple of them that turned yeah. out to be <laughs> yeah terrible but much more likely that they were you know solid people if they're <laughs> and everybody's much nicer in person and then and that reflects backwards so by bringing personal touch into it with like us connecting with each other in person makes us much friendlier on the internet well that's the thing if you don't ever have to be accountable for yourself you know and you can just chatter off on the internet now if you're on the forum and and you know hey you know i might have to talk to one of these guys at a fucking meetup maybe i should be a little more respectful <laughs> maybe i should fucking think about that right. um because not everybody you know looks like what what you think they're gonna look like when you right. see them in person i was just telling you that this morning that you're not you know when i first met you years and years ago you know you're way taller than i thought you yeah know, you're, you're quite a bit taller than me and uh you know i'm a big guy um and i think that you know from just you're posting nobody sees you at scale and nobody right. you know what i mean so nobody knows you know what people look like up close and i think yeah i think like you said the accountability of you know we're gonna meet we're gonna meet in person you're gonna see i'm a cool guy you know right. what i mean if you're a cool guy cool you know i think that does kind of keep everybody in check on who they're gonna be and how they're gonna represent themselves in a forum or in an internet community right so no it's cool man i'm uh I'm super grateful to be part of it. Um, it's brought me, in my opinion, it's helped um, bring a lot of success my way. Um, we, you know, 
I started in the Good Life Gang in the beginning and I didn't own a company. I was an extractor. Right. So one thing I did is I would leverage my benefit in the company because yeah. my fucking chat ass boss wasn't right. a fucking gang life member. Right. You know, he didn't he didn't know shit. Um, and I would leverage my discount and and you know skim. The companies don't care. They're just nah. like, what's your what's your gang membership? What's your email? You know what I mean? And, and they'll give you the discount. That's what it's for. Yeah. So I would let him use my discount mm -hmm. to buy the new shit and the right. nice shit I wanted, yeah. you know, from my homies and other, mm -hmm. you know, vendors I had met and became friends with over the years. Um, and that worked great for me. Yeah. Um, same thing. A leverage S ship, yeah. SOPs, mm -hmm. different stuff you guys put out, um, extractor training, certification, stuff like that. Like all this stuff can be used for smart, good employees to leverage more yeah. pay, Dude. more position, more handle on the companies they're in yeah no i got guys that will put together like their you know bio their their resume is loaded with all this like yeah. random stuff that we've put out that they showed us some chad who's like oh great this guy dude your fucking hemp sheet yeah remember the, <laughs> yeah, fucking, the worksheet the, yeah the worksheet the hemp. <laughs> yeah do you know how many fucking jobs i scored with that fucking <laughs> worksheet i'm like I don't, it's like using your homie's homework yeah and perfect. i would just i would be like i have a whole uh you know breakdown of all all the equipment and all the stages and all the money so you know when an investor came to hemp they wanted to see you know how much i can process a day yeah let's see all the math how much money that's going to take and then like three versions of it mm -hmm. so those that view that don't know what we're talking about dustin um went and made a fucking worksheet and yeah. gave it to the entire gang yeah like, fuck i think the whole forum oh yeah it's on the forum yeah. yeah it's just like a excel spreadsheet and and you know i put it on the forum because i'm not a super genius this is just yeah. the formula i was i needed for a job i was doing for the same exact <laughs> that's reason that's what i mean by and, cheating off your home right, homework but yeah. but I, and i knew that my this is like maybe b minus work right yeah. and i needed like a a plus work so i put it on the forum and i said here's what i got and we got a bunch of nerds that are like oh well you fuck this call them up and this one doesn't make any sense because your formula and they're like your formula should be this and i'm like oh yeah you're right plug it in version two give them a little comment like credit and then yeah. they're like yeah nice okay cool and then we're moving them so the refined version like six or seven you go through that thread and you look down and you find like some of the a couple of people have posted ones are like no you're you guys are all idiots here this is how you should do it and don't you like, love critics they're, and they're, haters some of them are really good i'm like oh yeah this is the one right here <laughs> yeah, i don't want to butcher his name but there's a um there's a guy that does podca podcast and he truly looks at his critics and haters as the ones that have his best interest at heart <laughs> because anything they're making fun of him about criticizing him about anything he changes yeah and like he they're right there yeah somebody saw something at the end of the day if you're really critical over yourself and you're not maybe pay, uh, paying attention to stuff and yeah some jackass was like eh, grammar nazi or whatever excel nazi comes and tells you how to put the right formula at the end of the day they're trying to make fun of you or whatever or point out that you're not king right but they just taught you things yeah like, uh, yeah i'm the first <laughs> to admit like <laughs> i'm yeah i'm not i'm not special i'm not i'm not the smartest guy in the room like no, but that's super smart. Yeah. And to put something up there for criticism and end up getting it done perfect, that's like, it's, it's perfect. Uh, there's this whole <laughs> kind of like mindset that I found that it, the better you take care of the people around you, the better your own life becomes. Like this, you you said you've saved all this money. Like we have one small tra financial transaction and it's brought you a bunch of financial success. I've never asked you for more money, right? Yeah. But what you've given back in return is like endless hospitality. And that's always my goal because yeah. imagine if you had a life set up like that where you could literally go anywhere and have the hospitality of everybody everywhere because you helped them all so much that they're like, please come, come stay at my house. You know, yeah. that's what now when I travel for these, I got five people who are like, yo, come, come to my house. Like, and that's come. what you got for me. <laughs> yeah, of course. You he said, I mean? please stay with me. Stay yeah. with me. You know, you guys asked, oh, how much do you want to, to rent the spot? Mm -hmm. like, Fuck no, it's, yeah. we're gang. You know what I mean? And that's, and it's way past the original fucking membership fee or whatever, the lifetime fee or whatever. It's way past that. Yeah. It's, it's the support that, the other thing, it's the support that everyone has given along the line. But the other thing is I can go to a meetup and I could have a fucking problem in my lab. You know, I can't, I can't get this tech right. It usually takes asking one, maybe two guys, um, including yourself. Hey, you know what, what do you think about this? Get an incredibly intelligent answer and I'll go back and fucking fix it. Right. You know what I mean? Not having to pay for consultants, not having to yeah. get dicked around, not right. having to get taken advantage of. Yeah, yeah. And, and that, that shop talk and that support that, and it's not only you, it's no, and, and every it game can't member, be. Yeah, exactly. You know? It's got to be 
it can't just be one. It's that's not what it's about. It's about this network of answers because you might get four different people and two of them are saying one thing, one guy says another thing and the other guy's got a completely different idea and it may be somewhere in between all of them that's the answer, you know, so you, you but you, the point is that you've got this like mesh network of, of support and I want to use this as a point to kind of diverge here. I, I, I want to talk about like, I, I guess I'm an anarchist and I'm, I'm like strongly libertarian. So I see this what we're talking about is we've gone kind of beyond the financial aspect of this relationship where we can find value from each other in non-taxable ways, which is kind of like the underlying importance here is yeah. that again, money is just like this paper thing that signifies our relationship and its value. Yeah. Like with your wife, it's everything you, your relationship with your wife is not purely transactional. You guys don't do money like between each nope. other for services and shit like that. No, that's not your relationship, right? It's a but give and take barter right, system. Right. But your employees, <laughs> it is, it's you're yeah. paying them for everything they do. So there's this, this line between like worker relationship, uh, business relationship, and then kind of into this next level, which it can still be a business relationship. We both derive a bunch of value from working together, but what we're not doing is involving the government in our interactions by exchanging right. dollars because yeah. we don't have to. We can both yeah. see where I can get value, which may be dollars from somebody else yeah. and skip the, the And they tax. hate that. They hate that. They, they hate don't want that. you to do that yeah. because if you look, if you can extrapolate that way back and if you have a, a, a good enough community, you can operate much outside of yeah. their, their system. Well, and I think you'll find, and, and we've found through, through personal conversations that our beliefs are very aligned, um, you know, and I myself am an anarchist, and a lot of people stray away from that, you know, term and, and don't really understand it. They don't understand but, it. But at the end of the day, yeah, there's there's much more value and, and there's much more ways to exchange value than just a a a controlled currency right um and and there's nothing wrong with it you're not breaking any laws you're not doing anything wrong well hold there's one one caveat is that direct trade is taxable so like if i got apples and i trade you for your weed we both owe like and it's it's tricky but the, there's a specific tax code for but that. intellectual property intellectual property you letting me have a party here instead of charging me that's not illegal there's nothing no. illegal about that like no. you, i can throw a party at your spot whenever the fuck you want and like yep. and call it whatever you yeah. want like that's not but i mean you also could have sold me this spot so that's one of those that's where it's kind of a, a yep. gray you know there's there's these gray areas where it's not a direct barter of of goods <clears throat> um so there's that but look i'm i'm a capitalist i believe yeah. that everybody should be able to pursue whatever capitalistic pursuit that they want and that the free market will dictate what's the best for it. And because what that means to me is, first of all, step away from thinking that the only form of capital is the, is the dollar. The more important capital is like social capital because you get dollars from people. So you need to build social capital to get well, financial your network capital. is your net worth exactly That's the whole concept yeah but that. but and then like when you look at dollars as the only form of capital you're completely uh you know putting one variable on a such a multi-variable thing capital includes your happiness if you're a miserable person you have all the dollars in the world you don't you're not wealthy you're fucking poor you're like you're miserable like wealth is a mindset is a lifestyle is like being content with your position it has nothing to do with how many dollars you have well and they've they've shown you know the famous i don't know meme or whatever but they've shown the you know east indian guy like you know old man on the street with this big old chester cheese smile and it's like happiness or whatever wealth yeah, is yeah. a mind state happiness is a mind yeah. state you don't need you know dollars to be happy you don't need fucking a mansion to be happy you don't need fucking all the toys in the world to be happy um it that there's a whole wealth in that right as well right most of the the now in our current system, depending on where you live, there may be a base level of wealth that you need to be to not be miserable. To survive. To survive, yeah. to not be just at, like broken. Yeah. And, and and that's, you know, location is, is the important key yeah. here because it's like you could go down to the beach of Mexico and there's guys that have very little money and their house is a shack, but they got a sick boat and they go out and fish every day and they're just having the best time in the world. And every now and then the tourist comes by, they bring them out, they make some money and they go on for the next couple of months and they're happy as a clam. Or you could go to LA and have people making 50, 60 grand a year living in Skid Row yeah. because they can't afford fucking right. a house making 50, 60 grand a year. You got people in LA making 200 grand a year yeah. up to their eyeballs in debt, living paycheck to paycheck, like on the borderline of being at Skid Row, yeah. right? Like enough pharmaceuticals to be right at the edge. Dude, true story. Um, I, I was offered a job. Um, 
I think it was through, it was an industry connection. I don't know if it was Good Life Gang or not, but I was offered a job before I started Farmers for like 150 a year in uh, San Diego. And uh, Raven, uh, you know, she would have made over 100 as a nurse. And with us making a quarter fucking million a year, quarter fucking million dollars a year in San Diego, we wouldn't have been able to survive. No, we, no. Okay, and let me take that back. We would have been able to survive. It just would have been But tight. we would have been not able to live the same lifestyle right. we were modestly living in New Mexico. Right, right, right. Um, and our, but make three times what we were making. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Together in New Mexico. Yeah, nuts. Um, and that was like weird. Yeah. And and that's what you're saying. Same thing. You live on the beach in Mexico for fucking, you know, 50 cents a day. Yeah. You know I mean? Thriving. Yeah. That's Thriving. Just, that's what beer costs. Everything else yeah. is basically free. <laughs> Everything else is. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, wealth is so different and success is so different from person to person, mind to mind. And I think you truly have to go after your own personal what it means to you right you know what i mean and i mean i don't knock the guy that buys fucking 30 sports cars and fucking 10 mansions like that's what that's his fucking deal that's what he wants yeah. to fucking do the thing is i've like i've spent been spending more and more time with with people at that level and the it's like the percentage of happiness just keeps going down and down no it doesn't make <laughs> you happier yeah when i trapped with a bunch of like it just makes things boring. Ah, dude, just, <laughs> Nothing's exciting. Yeah, anymore. they work so hard. They barely get to play with those toys. They're just, it's endless. Like, I fear my dad's about to retire from the military and probably soon retire from his corporate job. And I keep stressing on him, like, man, you got to get into a hobby. He's into, like, woodworking. We've got the cars that we're rebuilding. Yeah. And so I've been pressing him. I'm like, look, we're going to keep, finish this yeah. car. We're going to get it. Let's well, retirement's just, scary. That's it. He, he. That's why he keeps working. He didn't have, he could have stopped working both of the jobs a long time ago. How old is he? He's was born in sixty six, so what's that like? Not yet sixty. My mom right was about born 60. in sixty seven. Okay, so they're the same age. That's crazy. Um, but yeah, he, but he keep. He was telling me like a couple a month or two ago, it, he got really close to almost them kind of giving him a pathway to maybe the next step past captain, which is yeah. like admiral, which is not you're yeah. talking like you're potential politician, but it didn't happen and i was like man i keep you're never gonna retire you're gonna work till you're 90 and then you're gonna die <laughs> well and and you know there's there's a couple concepts there some people say that if you stop working you die quicker and the ones that do work till they're 85 90 you know they live the longest lives because yeah. they never stop ticking let me just clear something up you need to stop working for the man yeah well <laughs> exactly step one stop working for the government so you can start smoking yeah. some weed and doing some mushrooms with me step to stop working for the corporate chads and then start working for yourself again like like i said get into a hobby let's you got all the money in the yeah. world you're, you're set for life yeah. both of you are like your retirement's perfect yeah start working on the cars let's build more cars it, like you can flip them if you want to you let's, know one thing that's hugely inspirational about you um that most people that follow you know um if they follow your social media um is your you're independently comfortable. Mm -hmm. You do what you want to do. Um, you're young. You're a really young guy. Um, and you haven't had to work for the man necessarily um, in many, many years. Right. Since you were really young. Yeah. Um, you know, I had the ski resort job that I got down to like, this, yeah, one weekend a month so I could keep the pass. And I had, I was a W-2 employee. But We had that, I had that question for you the other day. I was like, you, you, what was, what, have you ever had a job, man? And you kind of smiled at me and I was like, like a, and, and he's, you've said, I've had all kinds of jobs. I said, no, 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 like a fucking regular job. <laughs> Nine to five now. And then that's what you said. Yeah. It was a, basically a teenager job. Yeah, right? pretty much. Yeah. I mean, so when I dropped out, I, I worked. And that's not true when i was in college i worked uh at the usda and so okay. for uh like a summer and into a fall and during the summer for school um was it like an it internship? Was, so it was, i worked for the federal government uh but it was a school thing i got credits it was at the school it's part cool. of the ag cool. yeah, program yeah, yeah. technically i was a federal employee um but it was it was i worked for this seed scientist and she was uh like specialized on allium like yeah. garlic so it was a lot of like sorting dirt from seeds and they had all these different screens and stuff and then 
uh, it was out in the field in the summer planting and we had to put these bags on them to catch the pollen. I took yeah. care of plants in the greenhouse. I watered the salvia greenhouse, which was cool. They had a whole divinorum role. All I heard from that was the government uses student slave labor <laughs> to do much. their fucking ag studies. Yeah, pretty much. They paid me minimum <laughs> wage and I got credits for it. So it was okay. It was cool. One of the things I got to do a couple, few cool things. One of them was they had this organic orchard and I got to drive the game warden around every now and then and he'd shoot birds with a shotgun because it's like organic and that's oh, how yeah. they do bird control. This is so crazy. It's like a state employee. Uh, and then the other one was one time I got to drive, they had this trailer, it's like this big propane trailer and the big tank and a fan. And you put the like fan blower thing down into the, the gopher hole and you'd load, it had like a timing cycle. You'd put it down in there and you push the button and it'd load it with like air and propane and then it would torch it and it would go and blow it all out and it'd torch all the little gophers in the in the same orchard it's really wow. cool super cool fucking <laughs> that's how your organic <laughs> veggies are grown you vegans <laughs> you know i once saw a meme that kind of incorporated a little bit of that knowledge about very cruel best control procedures in farming yeah. basically is what it was like you know, overall um and vegans have no clue no i mean look if you're going to compare oh. store-bought beef that was finished on corn to uh you know industrially produced vegetables yeah dude they, i have the idea for a documentary all right go because you everybody's seen the the animal documentaries right i've seen them i've, I've yeah, cried it's, it's gross i've cried i even told you like yeah, I, 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 you were like do some cows and i'm like i couldn't eat them I, oh, well, they're my friends gross. you know what i mean so gross. but but industrial cruelty but anyway yeah. so i like i'm so if you made a video that highlighted the industrial pest control basically practices mm -hmm. and like go undercover to the gopher torture <laughs> and go undercover go to school <laughs> dude no joke do i had a buddy that worked for the air force base out here and his he was the pest control specialist i mean he had actually a really cool title it was like some crazy title but he was like the pest control guy on the and he had one day i went to his house and he was cleaning a bunch of fucking weapons a bunch of rifles handguns like crazy shit looked like some like grenades a little like fucking charges and shit i'm like what are you doing bro <laughs> and i was like what's all this shit and they were very expensive like high powered pest control weapons like air guns different air guns yeah. there was like flash bangs and you different watch any type of, the videos? of well he no i didn't have but, you no oh dude there's a whole subculture of th these guys that you're talking about often will video record it and dude there's some one just popped up it's i a, did taking out rats at yeah, night dude there's yes, one in a site he's protecting sheep on this hillside and there's a coyote and it grabs a sheep and he's just watching it and it's got it by the neck and he's I like saw that it, one. and he like turns around and he gets the perfect shot and he caps it yeah same thing so this guy did that for the air force base cool. my buddy and so they had all the hangers and they'd get these big ass back blackbirds pigeons hawks fucking yeah, at the base. owls yeah yeah interfering with air traffic yeah oh dude did Birds you, at the air base is bad. Well, you know in in the in the true american way it's like kill it yeah you know what I mean? yeah they're fucking <laughs> fucking my fucking hand. birds <laughs> yeah so he was the fucking executioner God. and bird murder you know, on tuesdays he'd you know spray the weeds in the field and then on yeah. wednesdays he'd murder everything in the fucking yeah. lot <laughs> and he had this arsenal and he showed me like oh, his man. vest and he had like this vest and he'd go in like full combat status he's got like all this shit so there was a prairie dog problem this is where it gets like really he sad the torch, dude. and gross bro is there was a prairie dog problem on the air force base out here and this guy was telling me all the sick shit he did to these prairie dogs and he was just like fucking prairie dogs and he, he, <laughs> yeah, was, all, like, he was like fucking would like talk about it and see red about yeah. like eradicating the prairie dog race what's that and what's that golfing movie with uh what bill murray and he's, he's like the groundskeeper <laughs> the <golfer>. and, yeah <laughs> your friend is this guy <laughs> you know and if you know any uh, guys you know pests like that can can wreak havoc on crops and cause you know financially you know destroy and then fuck up all yeah. kinds of shit yeah but it's crazy to think of there's people with the job of just murdering little little furry, cute little fuzzy animals <laughs> yeah. all day. Yeah. No, with the crops, if you got if nature's fucking up your crops, you're doing it wrong. Yeah. Yeah. You're doing nature wrong. 
Well, nature wasn't fucking up the Air Force Base. They were just shitting on the planes. Yeah. Or, or getting in the props. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. all that. I guess. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. valid. Birds at the airport's a big problem, actually. One for them. Yeah, for sure. Like flocks of birds at the airport. They'll try to, they do yeah. all sorts of control. They'll like ground planes because of it. <laughs> yeah. Like, especially, like geese are a big problem with commercial airports because a goose is a big bird. You suck yeah. that into the fucking turbo prop or the, into the turbine. Yeah. Fucking ribeye in the sky. Uh oh. <laughs> Engine number three's down. We got to turn around. <laughs> okay, I I, I can bird see strikes, I bro. See. <laughs> <laughs> I listened to some weird like stuff you shouldn't know or something <laughs> like that, and it was about bird strikes, and it was really interesting. <laughs> oh, that fucker's getting a little raunchy. Oh, I'm good, good. Yeah, we'll yeah, put it out. I'm good on that. that was a killer. Would have loved that. That was a disty blunt. Yeah, this is his place. I got these hash hole things here. I'm pretty sad he didn't come out. Yeah, he he comes to the you know local ones. He's yeah. in Florida. Yeah, he comes to Vegas every year. I guess everybody does. <clears throat> so what's next? What's next for for future? Um, well, to just wrap it up with the gang, I don't. I'll probably do one. I got some. I got some events that I'm doing with other people. We got uh, Ian's thing, uh, Dread Pirates thing yep. coming up. Ian's uh, dope. Don't remember the dates, but maybe we could put it in the show notes for Ian's next <laughs> class. Um, and then I got a couple mushroom things that I'm doing. Myco Fest, which is going to be over in Pennsylvania in August, I believe. Big mushroom uh, festival conference put on by William Padilla Brown. Yeah. That's Myco Symbiote on Instagram. If you guys don't follow him, definitely check it out. And then in October, I'm doing one in Washington, uh, Myceliate the Fest. Huh. And uh, same same deal, but West Coast in our like prime of our mushroom season. So that'll be a cool one. Um. You know, I know we talked about this before. Are those conventions and mushroom stuff, is that for edible and psychedelic mushrooms or just mostly psychedelic stuff? Uh, no, so the focus is mostly on like, um, so Mycofest is mainly on kind of like the culture of mushrooms, the science, like deep, deep science dives. You'll have some people there talking about probably cooking and preparing. We'll do some forays. We'll go out in the woods there in Pennsylvania, go look at some so of the So it is mushrooms. about food mushrooms. Food mushrooms. Yeah, yeah. there'll typically be a couple people there because they'll, they'll have like a, it's like um, the the conference site of the trade shows, gotcha. right? The top, but it's usually at a nice camp. There's usually you stay there. It's kind of a festival yeah. vibe too. But it's got a path. Like there's tents where people are talking and stuff. Um, so I'd say like usually 10, 15 percent psychedelic focus, and then a mix on the other side of like science, culture, and some permaculture. Usually, because like cultivation of like psychedelic to to food mushrooms is, is similar right? very similar yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. um and then usually I, so it's almost like it's almost like cbd to thc very <laughs> in the similar vein yeah for sure and in guys the cannabis land yeah, yeah yeah for sure you can do a lot of comparison stuff the like, different markets you know what i mean this yeah, yeah, yeah it's the same fucking trade show right, but right, right. yeah no definitely two different goals yeah um yeah usually one of these conferences will have they'll teach you how to set up a bin and you'll you could leave if you do this one course you can leave with like a bin ready and you take it home and it'll grow a bunch of mushrooms for you that's dope yeah that's dope i think that's really cool about you you're not just people People that that follow you obviously know because you're, you're um, you do a ton of content, but you're not just a cannabis guy. Um, you do so many different stuff, um, like you said, mushrooms, mycology, um, your uh, your permaculture. It's permaculture, not permaculture, right? Yeah, Perma permaculture, like permanent agriculture, perma permanent or perma permanent culture, permanent culture. You know, showing you're you're teaching people how to be you know self sufficient on land um you know we've talked about it multiple times since you've been here um about what to do with the land and, and, and cows and, and different types of agricultural stuff i think that's really cool um you don't see you don't meet a lot of guys that are as you know multi-versed as you um on different likes and hobbies um and different knowledges and research that you've put together over the years and then not only that but then you're diving into everything like i see you out there you know, you, fuck, I would say, honestly, cannabis content is you're like your least I see. <laughs> yeah. Well, probably because of fucking Instagram, but. Yeah, you know that, I mean? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've, I've learned. They've trained me good. Like, yeah. don't post about weed. We'll, we'll we'll squash you and just kick you off our platform if you keep talking about weed. So, but And, and maybe that's where it, it kind of forced you to do other content, mm -hmm. but your content is so diverse and your content is so like robust mm -hmm. you know you'll talk about so many like intelligent cool things like you know as far as like popular people on the internet and like influential people 
like you have so much education behind the content that you post, you know what I mean? Right. And I think that's like super cool, super honorable. Um, I think a lot of people are out there just posting whatever bullshit right. is just gonna make them popular, right. you know what I mean? Right. And I think you've taken like a different approach. I think, you know, either you're already popular already or whatever, but you've posted like good, like conscious stuff that like, people need to see people yeah. need to hear and you know like I, a, a lot of it it's i get people get mad at me i'll post something and then it's impossible for me to post like the entire context of it it's like because here's a really common thing i'm listening to an audiobook and they they talk about something random i've never heard of like some event or some person or something like how the who the wait wait a minute and i'll pause it and i'll go google them and then i'm looking on the wikipedia and that guy's crazy because he did this crazy thing i'm like wait what the fuck is this and it's like some massive event you've yeah. never heard of and you're like holy shit so i'll just screenshot that and post it and it'll be like you know 10 people will be like oh you didn't understand the context of this and blah blah, blah and you're an idiot because you're like and then a bunch of other people are like you know most people are like holy shit i never seen that you wear this and i'll explain to them back and then i'll tell them about the book i was reading and it's like it's really cool stuff so it, but it's the internet's so weird because you didn't get the whole hit you know the whole experience you just got this one little snippet because that's just yeah. how i'm working you get like, attacked a lot yeah i mean not a lot but yeah. you know it's Enough. the internet yeah, yeah exactly not a lot but yeah yeah it, it's just not even attack but i think there's just a lot of people that are misunderstood in such a, or i think a lot of people are in such a bad spot in their life that the internet is where they're at to vent and yeah. they're even if they're not intentionally doing it their approach to talking to people is just negative and like we've been told that since we were little kids like if somebody's, you know, when we were little kids, somebody's making fun of you or the bull the bullying you. Is someone that got has, bullied, right? Has these horrible things trauma that are going on with from them. a place of trauma, and it comes from a place of trauma, psychological, right. whatever. But uh -huh. you know, and I think as we move into adults, it's the same fucking thing on the internet. Mm -hmm. um, there's no accountability. Right. They don't gotta. They don't gotta answer nobody. They they feel that they are, you know, ghosts, um, and they're just deflecting or whatever um just horrible energy and just inner trauma and inner issues they have yeah and that's just it's sad i've gotten to a point where if you're just consistently negative i'll just put you in one of the little instagram little you can compartmentalize people you put you press the restrict button and they still can interface with it all you want but you don't have to see what they're saying and it stays over here yeah and because you've just shown me a pattern of always being negative for no reason like and yeah. i have so little time to like, I try to still, you know, I try to communicate with as many people on Instagram as possible just because it's been such a powerful tool, but it's literally impossible. You got, you know, once I got past about 10,000 followers on there, it become just in, in, unmanageable. It's impossible. Uh, so I, but I still try to do my best to at least, you know, engage with people that try to engage me. And if I'm constantly on there and I, a lot of time my engagement will just be like, that I've seen it like yeah. it popped up. Sorry guys. I don't like, sometimes I'll hit it real quick to give you a little heart. Like, yeah, that's, you know, but people be sending me videos and all this shit. I'm like, look, I don't really have uh, cool. Thanks. Like nice. And, and if you're one of those people that I'm, you know, consistently conversing with, then good for you. Like yeah. you found how, the, how many, how many DMS do you think a day you get? Oh, that I, I wonder if it, I'm sure it tracks the metrics. I'd you like think, to you think see it's hundreds, hundreds, yeah. at least hundreds to thousands, depending on what I've posted. I, I don't think people realize that. So I'm I'm definitely not as, as famous as you are, but I get about 30, 40 DMs a day. Mm -hmm. And it's hard. Right. It's hard to, A, half of them are requests. So they sit there in mm -hmm. the hidden request right, file right, right, right. that nobody gives a fuck about. Right. And I like once in a while go through it and be like, oh God, what, what the fuck? Yeah. Um, but anyways, so you don't see half of them. And then they just keep coming. Yeah. They just multiplying, keep coming. Multiplying. So at the end of the day, when it says you have so many fucking messages, you're just like clicking. And yeah. half the time it's homies. Half the time it's like Hard. I said, people that are, oh, I got to ask you this question and it means everything mm -hmm. to me. And, and you don't mean to be disrespectful. It's just. Right. And I can't hire that lot. out. It doesn't yeah. make any sense to hire it out. You're going to get no. scammed. They, that's not even the point. Like I'm, I'm trying to have personal. So it's, yeah, it's, it's just, it, you just do the math and then that's okay. Then there's, Instagram DMs, which is overloaded. Then I got like a bunch of important emails and I got like two calls scheduled today and I got a baby waking up at five, right? And I got like chores to do. To, so like, it's impossible. I'm, yeah. I'm, 
I uh, did really well for myself long before I ever had Instagram, yeah. right? And life was much more simpler than, yeah. um, and Instagram has been a powerful tool to like multiply that out into, but it's it's like, a, it's not the most important thing in my life. So yeah. it's like a very yeah. side thing. I don't think people understand that. People have a hard time breaking out of like social media reality and realizing that, yeah. And Mike Lee Quick himself, I have a fucking company to run. I have you know, three kids, but two that are still at home, mm -hmm. four fucking dogs, a house, all these responsibilities and everything else and fucking four Instagram accounts, you know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. And a Facebook right. and whatever other bullshit. Yeah, it's too much. If you want my like undivided time, come to a meetup. Yeah. Yeah. I, we like, if you have a membership, you can come to them all for free. I sell tickets to them now. And honestly, probably half the people here last night were here for free. Oh, they broke in at the, the at the Canacon. There became yeah. a rumor that this was the mm -hmm. cool after party. Right. And yeah, there was a plus, bunch of randoms. And look, we're, we're cool. Like yeah. if, if you can figure out a way to get that and some spots, we have more security than others. We have to just like based yeah. on the venue, but, and it's much more difficult to get in. But if you find a good way to, and if you're here and you enjoy it. And I had a guy that he came here for free. He was like, you told me about a membership earlier and uh, explained what I did. And you told me that the membership didn't make sense and you tried to not sell me on it. And then yeah. you said that there's a meeting tonight and we ha there's tickets and we found a way to get here. And he's like, this is dope. Let me buy a ticket. Like I, yeah. I didn't have to, but I was like, nice dude. Thanks. That's cool, I get that so a lot. Yeah. Yeah. No. And it was cool last night, man. It's, it's cool to see people that are coming up and, and meeting you for the first time. Um, meeting, you know, the busy bee guys, um, Boris, Cal, Kyle, um, meeting them for the first time. Um, that's one thing you said earlier is being able to connect with the owners of these companies, the, you know, founder of the group, the, you know, being able to connect, connect with these such, such cool, unique, big personalities is, is like priceless. You know right. what I mean? You can't put a value on that. And then, yeah, you know, people that, that follow you and want to meet you and, and want to, you know, ask you a question or you know what i mean you know see how see how you are that's you make yourself extremely available right like this isn't these guys that he's talking about and me sitting at some table signing autographs yeah. <laughs> like don't get it twisted we're having a big party sesh and we're hanging out yeah. with you you got like show me what you brought to smoke on like yeah. let, let's session and everybody does everybody knows the knows the drill yeah we all know the vibe there's everybody's no, got a backpack yeah. full of their best yeah and everybody's you know there's there's tables everywhere you know it's set up to, to to get down to business exactly and and everybody's hanging out yeah. And and on a real level, no, you can't smoke here. You, can't, nah, 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 nah. Yeah. you know, we we make sure you make sure that there's an environment where where cannabis people can be free to hang out without. Yeah, we wouldn't have know, an event if you couldn't consume. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's so, that's our like core directive is step one: good hash. Like, yeah, we're not gonna have an event anywhere chadley enough to not let you smoke good hash good food good yeah, people last it. night bomb food yeah the food was great last oh, night fuck all weekend dude yeah food was better the night before <laughs> <laughs> my 14 year old when he when, he when met, we left we, today <laughs> he was like bye dustin he was ready to give dustin yeah. a hug he's like wait look <laughs> got a letter written, written for dustin but first night dustin was here uh he i gotta tell the story uh he tells me as soon as he gets off the plane he's like or before he even got here he's like where's the butcher and i'm like oh for what man and i don't know why What's i'm a country? fucking stoner i'm like are you bringing like a fucking cow like what did, why do you need a butcher dude you know what i mean and he was talking about the meat store you know go buy some steaks um so i was like oh there's like one good good steak store in, in the in the town they've been there forever shout out keller's um so we went like from the airport to get these steaks right and <laughs> dustin buys like all this fucking steak to make dinner um that night and uh you know long story short we run around all day getting fucking food ingredients um and we get back to the house and my 14 year old son walks up and he sees dustin like he had already cooked everything and my son's eyes are all big and he goes dad um is he a famous chef <laughs> And I was like, hey, Dustin, he thinks you're a chef. And I was like, I was like, I don't know. I, I mean, he looks like a chef. I but, am now. <laughs> but uh, it, anyways, Dustin made this fucking amazing steak. Um, and I knew in the car I was fucking in for something because he starts telling me the tech. He starts telling me the tech and what he's going to do 
to these fucking stakes, right? And and I'm just like, and it got pretty, it got pretty deep. And I look at him and I was like, I'm so fucking glad I didn't try to make you stakes tonight, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it would not have come out. It would not have come out like this, man. You would have, you would have judged me for the rest of my life. But anyways, dude, he made these, uh, they were Delmonico ribeyes, reverse seared, um, with the chimchurri, fucking fresh chimchurri, uh, chimichurri, and uh, and pico de gallo and uh, elotes. Yeah, and it was Came fucking nice. amazing. Yeah, for all the all the homies, all the all the vendor homies, and all the the people that bought yeah. VIP tickets. Yeah, I just sold a couple of VIP yeah. tickets, just enough to cover the cost of the party. Yeah, and we and, rock and rolled. And man, it was good. Yeah, I, uh. I might start my own little thing. Yeah. If it's just that, I could do that over and over and over. That's what we do. I was telling Donnie, the reason was, it was, for me, this is just what we do for on the when regular have, with the family. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. You go on the watch. I post every now and then. This is just how we eat. Um, and not even when I have company, bro. That's, how, that's it's Tuesday night. Dude, the, <laughs> and then this is what bugs me when people are like, oh, I can't figure out how to make any extra money, whatever. The hustle is unlimited. Yeah. You could do cooking fucking classes. You can do dinners with fucking right. Dustin. Well, you know what I mean? Look, and making more money also is the inverse of spending less money. So the way I live and eat is all because it was cost optimization. Like, yeah, I mean, you may not be able to uh, raise your own cow. I under, and I would argue that you probably can. And I can show you a way with very little capital that you could yeah. start raising your own cows on someone else's space. land. Right. It was space. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Space is a big one. But you can um, lease land from farmers. That's for fairly oh, cheap. 100%. For all, no, people will pay you to make. <laughs> maintain land yeah and you people will pay you to fatten up cows mm -hmm. so the that combination of, their, of those two the hustle's endless yeah. right and i can point you towards people that are explaining like specifics on that yeah. hustle if you're interested come find me i'll show you how you can you can hustle cows but point being i was telling donnie on the way over like on our food preps it's a whole shit ton of rice and i like we, what we eat is a lot of steak and rice because steak is what i grow and then you know we've got the garden so we're growing our herbs and stuff the, you can save a bunch of money just by cooking your own food you buying cheap roasts and preparing them and cooking them ahead of time and then having meal plan for the week with a bunch of rice bro cheapest nutrient dense food you're going to get at the grocery well, store and right i know there. a couple families that buy either quarters or, or sides of beefs mm -hmm. uh of, of cows of course um and then they they have the butcher do, 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 give them their yep. whatever six seven cuts yeah, or whatever all the different stuff and then they freeze it all year that's and they space again they chip into it if you have a big enough freezer yeah. that's the space yeah. and, but now you can legally buy down to one eighth of a share of a cow so yeah. you, that's of, and if you can find someone with like dexter cattle that's the the reason we started raising really small cows in with our herd uh was one eighth of a small dexter cow fits in the average california dude's little freezer in his apartment and yeah. that guy will spend a premium on the premium cow so yeah. my little dexter cows that are getting high with me all the time eating luscious grass those are <laughs> what, just tell us what the cost is future we'll, yeah. we'll buy your you know so for the first couple of years we it was a business i quickly realized i'd rather eat the beef than sell it so well and yeah exactly have parties with it and well whatever. and not only do you get value and you actually end up saving money from buying like single steaks at the fucking store, but you get better product, you get better meat, right. you get something you have. Well, hopefully if you did it right, you can trace what it's eaten, mm -hmm. the environment it lives in, right. you know, did it, did it sit in a fucking 10 by 10 in its own shit? Right. You know what I mean? You can just buy it right from the farmer. You you should go and see the cow while it's still alive. Yeah. Technically you, oh. you own that cow while it's alive. Technically that's how those shares Or work. in most ideal like you do, just raise the fucker. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And w the, look, I couldn't afford land to raise cattle on either. I leased it. I found a super deal on some land that was just sitting there doing nothing. And I, you know, we put signs up for it. I said, you know, pasture needed or pasture wanted for yeah. lease. And this old boy found me. He's like, here, look at this pasture I got. I was like, yeah. I think that comes down to like one of the most important concepts that, you know, I was taught as a little kid, a closed mouth doesn't get fed right you have to speak you have to be able to communicate you have to if you want something in the world if you want something just in your community start asking people about it start talking to people network with the right people and then on the same thing in your industry or your career path or in your case like you're talking about in 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 a new hobby or new you know thing you want to learn network talk to people right you know what i mean find the opportunity don't make fucking excuses like oh i you know i wasn't taught farming or i don't I, I right yeah know. when you see yeah. when you see all this stuff i was not taught any of this yeah. i grew up in the suburbs 
Yeah. We didn't learn farming. I didn't learn, you know, cannabis, any of that shit. I, yeah. I was not a chemist. I, you know, we learned chemistry out of necessity because no chemist wanted to do it at the time because yep. they said, no, it's too risky. Yeah. So, okay, well, you usually well, had to learn a little bit of chemistry to not die. That was really what it was. It's like, it's, okay, I got an idea. Oh, yeah. It was like a little bit to get further. And then you go further and you're like, well, I, I, I see now the, the route to going further, but I don't know what the hell I'm doing. So yeah. yeah, absolutely. That was right when we were starting to be able to like, we had enough money that I could go and kind of buy help from the chemist. They would interact that from that distance. I'm like, look, I'm doing this, this, and this. Photon was one of my early yeah. mentors where we had you know an exchange. And I said, look, I got all this these problems and some ideas. Can you help me refine? And he's like, yeah, this is okay. You could go this way. The rest of these, you're an idiot. Don't do it. <laughs> so that's how we got into mass scale ethanol extraction. That guy is one of the smartest humans I've ever had the the honor of of meeting yeah that guy is super fucking cool yeah very cool yeah yeah and at, at when i met him at the at you know the very early point of meeting him he was still a bit tied into his previous life and so was still hesitant to dive fully into cannabis because of the potential repercussions oh, yeah. or implications well which, real scientists real chemists that have accolades and, and yeah you don't want to ruin your whole in, career in their, in their because career. you're yeah for sure it makes Not sense. Even, don't even touch it you yeah. know what i mean it's not like, worth it to to them it's like you know helping out a meth lab buddy or, 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 or to the society not to them but, or yeah. or like yeah the they could just get shit canned and lose their well, exactly. lose their job it's, and their it, reputation it's, right yeah it's an ugly even if you, rep to have even if you personally believe in it yeah right no i think yeah you know and i think that that that's a good note to kind of conclude on i think that the 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 world we live in is is really finely um taking a different look at cannabis yeah it's good and then mushrooms and hopefully that helps uh, us all be nicer to each other well and and me and you you know talked about this briefly too is is everybody just needs to communicate a little better and 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 be a little smart smarter on the political side of it and and unite and and cure the world from just fucking collapsing yeah. like it like it could happen yeah you know? well the world won't collapse just well all of us society. peasants will devolve into yeah angry mobs and the elite yeah. will just keep playing us like they are yeah. yeah so hopefully hopefully cannabis and uh and mushrooms and good smart people will help that not happen yeah we'll see yeah we'll see <laughs> i hope so too thanks for coming on man it's been an absolute fucking honor I really appreciate having you, man. It, it's really cool that you came out. Yeah, this was great, dude. Fuck really you. appreciate it. Where, where, where can people find you? Uh, Jess, what up? Oh, hey, dude. There's someone else here. Um, I'm on Instagram, Future4200. The Good Life Gang's got one, too. We're not super active over there. Um, and then the the forum is future4200.com. And uh, the Good Life Gang is goodlifegang.tech. That, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you for coming out. And we'll definitely see you and talk to you guys soon. Awesome, dude. Thank you. Welcome to the farm table.